But look at what the Bible says that God does to prepare these 70 people that Moses is choosing out to help him. Now, first of all, too, just, just understand this. These people are being chosen by Moses based on their character already, based on the type of person, based on, on how humble they are, how, you know, the, 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 the way that they present themselves, the way that they live, how godly they are, right? And they don't know that this, this moment is coming up where they're going to be chosen to do a greater job or a greater work or to serve more. But they've just been doing the best that they can. And this is where you need to understand, you know, where I said don't limit yourself. There may come a time where there's a need and God wants to use you to be put into a different position. So make sure that you're ready to be used. That you're someone that, that is going to want to be selected. Right? You don't want to be like when, when kids are picking teams for basketball or something, be like the last guy that nobody wants on a team. You know, like the, these 70 people, these were the top 70 guys, or Moses thinking, if I could have anybody help me out, who can I rely on? Who's going to be faithful? Who's going to be dependable? Well, I want this person, this person, this person, this person, right? That's how you ought to be living your Christian life, is just thinking like, hey, if, if anything needs to be done, I want to be the guy that can be called on to get this job done. Even if you don't have great plans of going off and being a missionary or being a pastor or doing some other, you know, high-profile job, if you will, in the church, just be someone that can be used of God in any capacity. And just be living that way so that you're ready when, when the time comes. You say, like, well, I don't think I could preach. I don't think I'd do this. Well, you know what? God could change that. I mean, Moses was so frightened of doing this, he was just begging God, like, God, can you just have, like, someone else? I mean, okay, God, but whoever you really want to have do this, and, and, and God gave him Aaron. But what we see, even after God gave Moses Aaron, did Moses really need Aaron? He thought he did, but did he really need him? No, because once God supplied his spirit to Moses, Moses was doing the talking anyway. See, when, when he gave him Aaron, he's like, okay, well, here, you'll be to, to Aaron like I am to you. You'll be like God to Aaron, and you're going to speak and tell him what he needs to say, right? Just like I'm telling you what you need to say. But then when we read the Bible, we see Moses doing most of the talking anyways. I mean, he, he steps in and fills that role. So he was, he was uncertain and had some doubts, but they were unfounded and unwarranted because God would supply. Because he, didn't, he couldn't understand how can God change him enough to be able to speak and, and, and do what he needed him to do. But God did absolutely provide and give him what he needed to be able to do the job. So, so just remember that in general, just in your life, and don't sell yourself, and definitely don't sell God short. I mean, yourself, yeah, if you're just left to yourself, you won't be able to do it. But understand that that's not how God works. He doesn't just leave you to yourself. He will pour out his spirit upon those he wants to use to fill his, his will. Let's look at verse number 16. So the Bible says, And the Lord said unto Moses, Gather unto me seventy men of the elders of Israel, whom thou knowest to be the elders of the people. And officers over them, and bring them unto the tabernacle of the congregation, that they may stand there with thee. And I will come down and talk with thee there, and I will take of the spirit which is upon thee, and will put it upon them, and they shall bear the burden of the people with thee, that thou bear it not thyself alone. So, my first point here, too, and this is just pretty basic and elementary, but important for understanding this is the old testament and god is is giving of his spirit to moses this isn't a new testament thing this is this is an all-time thing where god's saying okay i've already given part of my spirit unto you moses and i'm gonna i'm gonna also now pour my spirit that, that's on you and give it to these other guys so then they'll be equipped to be able to handle the job that you're doing so that they can help you do that same job Jump down to verse number 24. The Bible says, And Moses went out and told the people the words of the Lord and gathered the 70 men of the elders of the people and set them round about the tabernacle. And the Lord came down in a cloud and spake unto him and took of the spirit that was upon him and gave it unto the 70 elders. And it came to pass that when the spirit rested upon them, they prophesied and did not see. So right away, and, and, and I'm going to point this out right now, but pay attention to this as we continue to go forward. The number one thing that you're going to see when God pours out his spirit on people is the, what do they do? They speak. They preach. They prophesy. Here the Bible says the spirit rests upon them. They prophesied and did not cease. 
They didn't stop. And we're going to see many examples of this. But the reason why I say that, I mean, think about, if you're just to take a step back and just think, without all the Bible knowledge and everything else, and just say, if, God, if I'm just communicating with God and God's going to pour his spirit on me, just at a really high level, right? Just, just kind of forget about all the doctrines of the Bible. Just, just think about, here I am, there's God. God's going to pour out his spirit on me. What's that going to do for me? What is that for? What is the purpose of God giving of his spirit? I mean, am I going to be able to just like be like Superman and fly around and do all this stuff? I mean, with God's spirit, I should be able to do that, right? I'm going to be like a mutant and have all these powers and, do, you know, like. But no. See, people come up with all kinds of things if you're just thinking in general about God and spirit. But every time, I mean, I want you to notice this. We'll go through a lot of examples. When God pours out his spirit, it's for one purpose. It's to be able to preach. It's to be able to prophesy. It's to be able to speak the word of the Lord the way that he wants to preach. And, he, and we ought to be coveting God to pour out his spirit on us so that we can preach. 